Fish on. It's a dolphin. Mahi. Hey guys, welcome to another Yakfish TV production. I'm Robert Field, and as usual, I'll be your host. Right now, I'm driving the new Toyota Tundra TRD Pro from my hometown in Dallas, Texas, all the way to Pompano Beach, Florida on the southeast coast, nearly 20 hours away. You're about to watch the first part of a three-part series that's gonna document my experience as I fish off Florida's coast, leading up to the Extreme Kayak Fishing Summer Slam 1 tournament. Target species for this trip are gonna include kingfish, blackfin tuna, mahi-mahi or dolphin fish, barracuda, all types of sharks including hammerheads, tigers, big bull sharks, and if I'm lucky, I might even get to knock off one of my top three bucket list species of all time, a sailfish from the kayak. So day one, I'll be going out with Brian Nelly from Pushin' Water Kayak Charters. He is one of the top guys off Florida's East Coast. You're watching Yakfish TV, and part one of extreme offshore kayak fishing starts now. Alright guys, so here I am on day one in Southeast Florida and today Brian Nelly from Pushing Water Kayak Charters is going to be taking me out to show me the ropes. Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about Pushing Water. Well, Pushing Water Kayak Charters has been running their business for about five years now. Uh, we do inshore, offshore, cater to everybody from the novice to the more advanced kayak angler. Awesome man, so if they don't have a kayak and they don't have rods and reels, do you provide some of that, all that, how's that work? We provide everything for you. All you do is come out, we got a kayak safety equipment, rods, reels, tackle gear, everything you need. Nice, so Brian routinely puts people on fish of a lifetime. I've seen him help clients catch everything from sailfish, mahi, snook inshore, bonefish, you name it, he can put you on it. So if you're coming down to South Florida, you need to hit up Brian, he'll put you on some fish. Brian, how can they find out more about pushing water? You can check us out on the web at tckayakfishing.com. tckayakfishing.com. If you're in South Florida, you need to hit him up. He's going to show you a good time. For now, man, let's get out there and do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sweaty right now. <laughs> So right now we're getting bait. All right, so Brian's gonna show us how we're gonna rig up for these fish. We're using goggle eyes today. Prime bait for South Florida. Basically, I'm running a, a 60 pound wire leader uh, with a 4.0 Eagle Claw live bait hook and a number four stinger. Basically, going through the nostrils on top of the head of the bait. So, this looks good. He's got enough room to move around and he's good to go. Simple enough. We're gonna start off trolling these on top, see if there's any action with this cloud cover, and if not, then we'll bust out the down riggers, get the bait further down. Let's go. Let's give it a shot. Got the J-hook hook through the nose, the stinger along its back, and you want to have enough slack in this wire that it can still swim freely. Should be good. Fish out! Woo! I don't 
don't know what it is yet. Feels pretty decent. It's headed down, not up, so I don't think it's a sailfish. It could be a kingfish. Hopefully it's not a bonita. I've been hearing they're real thick out here. Yeah, it feels pretty worn out already. Can't be that big, whatever it is. First fish in Florida, let's see what I got. It looks like it's exactly what I was afraid of, bonita. It's not what I wanted, but I'll take it. My first offshore South Florida fish. It's Bonita, not what I was hoping for, but got something on the board. It's still early, so it's nice to have caught a fish already. Get him on ice, keep him fresh and use him later for bait. All right, so Bonita are considered trash fish because they don't taste good. But I'll tell you what, that thing is built like a torpedo. That was a fun fight. But right now, let's get another bait out and see if we can't catch something we're looking for. I'll tell you what, a lot of people gripe about having to wear a life vest out on the water. For me, this life vest is a lot more than just a safety net. This is the Chinook PFD by NRS and on top of helping me be safe on the water, especially out here offshore where there's strong current, you never know when the weather's going to get bad, it's also a functional fishing tool. I've got my line cutters here on a leash in this pocket, got my cell phone right here, keep my pliers handy, my knife handy in case of emergency if I need to cut line or cut rope. It's super comfortable, it's got this high back so it doesn't get in the way of my seat. All in all, I never get on the water without this thing. And again, not just for safety, it helps keep me organized while I'm on the water. All right, let's get another bait out. Brian's hooked up to a sailfish. Oh. Woo! Nice! And now it's raining. For a rainy day sail fishing. Nice fish, dude. I am so jealous right now. Hell yeah. You're next. God, that is awesome. That is awesome. What a fish, man. All right, so this guy's kicking pretty good. We're gonna revive him a little bit more and uh, release him, let him run away. Try to get another one. That was an incredible fight to watch. Uh, Brian Nelly, he's the man out here. He knows what he's doing. He made it look easy. I know that was not easy. It would definitely not be easy for me, but man, what a cool fish. That is what I'm here to get. So it was cool to feel one and get to release one. Now he's got to catch one. Let's see if we can't get lucky and hook up. Let's get another bait out. 
So the Bonito were extremely thick this day and it seemed like no matter what technique we tried, that's all we were catching. It was fun at first, but by the fifth or sixth one, I was sick of hooking them and I started to get desperate. All right, so we're kind of running out of time this drift. We haven't been able to weed through the, uh, the Bonita, so I'm going to cut up this Bonita and I'm going to put a big bloody hunk on this rig, throw it out there, see if we can't get a cool shark on the line. Like this whole thing or? All right, Bonita make great shark bait because they're real bloody. I'm basically just going to drag this thing behind me and odds are it'll draw out a shark. Probably won't take long. Let's drop it out. See if we can't bring up the man in the gray suit. Nelly just spotted a hammerhead. There he is. Big hammer right here at the boats. I don't see him now. There he is. There he is, right on my bait. Right on my bait. He swam up and, and swam past it. Keeps swimming by my bait, he's not grabbing it, I don't know why. I don't have eyes on him now. I'm scared to ain't let my GoPro in the water because, oh there he is, coming up on Nelly. There he is. Come on, man, eat it. Damn. So when the sharks are being picky, you know it's a tough day fishing. And I was starting to lose hope that I'd hook something worthwhile. absolutely love this Pro Edge slider fishing paddle from Accent Paddles. It's part of their slider series, so you can actually adjust the length of it on the fly just by pressing this button, which is really nice for a variety of reasons. If you've caught two boats that are different widths, now you can use one paddle and it'll fit either boat instead of having to have a different paddle for each. It's also nice if you've got a high and low position seat, because as you go higher you need a longer paddle and you can adjust it on the fly just like your seat. It is super lightweight, it's super rugged, I've taken it down rapids, taking it through the surf, it's just a really dependable paddle. And when you're going on trips like I do, out in remote areas or offshore, you need something you can rely on. Alright, so the bite's been pretty slow, I mean Nelly got a sailfish early this morning, but uh, since then we haven't had anything. So we're going to kind of switch up tactics, I'm still going to leave a live bait out behind me, and then we're going to start pitching dead sardines at these weed mats and see if we can't get into some mahi. We'll see. Fish on! It's a dolphin! Mahi! Nice! Woo, he didn't like the boat! Woo! There he goes! Got a second wind! Woo! 
my first mahi, woo! This guy's gonna be dinner tonight. Oh man, that is what I was hoping for out here. Sailfish and mahi are the two fish I really wanted to catch out here. And now I got my first one, a nice mahi. He went airborne a few times. Oh yeah, my first mahi. I was starting to lose hope, couldn't weed through the bonitas. And then finally, I got a run, assumed it was a bonita. As soon as I tightened down on it, it went airborne and I knew I had exactly what I came here for. It's really bizarre with these fish, pretty much as soon as you get them out of the water, they start changing colors. This guy was bright green and yellow when I caught him. Now he's starting to fade on the bottom and turning blue up top. It's wild how these things will change colors like that as they start to lose their life. But don't worry, buddy, you will not be wasted. He's gonna be dinner. Woo! If you come to South Florida, hit up Brian Nelly and push in water kayak charters tckayakfishing.com and he'll put you on the fish of a lifetime. Oh, let's get him on ice, keep him fresh, and let's get in. It's been a long day. Day one has been a success. I got to watch my first sail being caught, and then I got my mahi, which is one of the fish I was really hoping to catch. Oh, what an incredible day. For day one, I don't think it could have gone much better. I'm excited to see what the rest of the week brings. I'm Robert Field. You're watching Yakfish TV, and that was a mahi from the kayak here in South Florida. Woo! Alright guys, that's going to do it for part one of extreme offshore kayak fishing and luckily I was able to knock off one of the top species on my list. Now check out this preview of part two when I head out with Eric McDonald from Deep Blue Kayak Fishing and see if I can't knock out another one. At least we know what depth they're at. <laughs> <laughs>